This video is about a daemon mode for CMake that I've been working on. Uh, the intention is to make it easier for user tools to be created with CMake with advanced features such as code completion and debugging. Um, the way that I want to make that possible is by introducing a way for user tools to be able to communicate with CMake and get canonical information such as what commands are available, what keywords do those commands have, what targets are available, and a way to debug CMake code. So the kind of things that I want to make possible are getting the project structure from CMake, do semantic highlighting so that targets and keywords are highlighted differently to regular text, uh, get help URLs, also do code completion, debugging, and features like go to definition. We're familiar with these kind of features with our C++ IDEs, but for CMake there really isn't any tool for that. So I've created one which I can demo here. Um, on the left hand side you see a target browser. Uh, it shows me the build system structure that I have for this tool itself. So if I click on any directory it takes me to the CMake list file for that directory. Also, if I click on any target, it takes me to the line in that file where the target is defined. When I click on a target, I also get a list of sources on the right hand side. That shows me exactly what sources are going to be built for this target. Also the target type, this one is an executable, and what include directories and compile definitions are used when compiling those target sources. That's all information that an IDE needs to have in order to make good sense of the C++ code. It's what enables code completion and highlighting of C++ code. If I scroll around a little bit in the text browser, I can see that some lines are shaded. That means that those lines were not executed when CMake was running, which is a useful thing to know. So now I can know that a Qt5 test lib found was not uh, defined to be true when CMake was running. And I can look up and see, well, here I have find package Qt5 test lib and wonder why that is. And in fact, it's because I made a typo. There is no Qt5 test lib. It should be Qt5 test. But the shading gave me a hint about that. It gave me a hint that something was wrong and something that I should check out. That shading works for functions and macros and also if else cascades. So here with this code block, the if win32 was executed, it was determined to be false, and then else if unix was executed, determined to be true, and then we get the message. Every other else if beyond that in the same cascade won't be executed. So the, ca the shading shows you that. Also worthy of note is that there is syntax highlighting and semantic highlighting here. Syntax highlighting just highlights commands differently to command arguments and maybe strings, but semantic highlighting is highlighting keywords and targets in a special way. So here, find package is has a keyword called required and it has another one called quiet, and it has to be in the second position after the package to find. So if I actually remove the package to find, required is no longer highlighted as a keyword, and so I'm again getting a hint that, some, that something is wrong. Um, so if I put that back and if I typo, I get another hint that something is wrong. Um, so any any time I make a mistake here, I'm supposed to be able to get a bit of immediate feedback telling me that I've made a mistake. Similarly, targets are highlighted in a special way. Any command that takes a target name as a parameter highlights the target name. Um, target link libraries takes a few target names as parameters here and here. Other commands take just one followed by a keyword and some arguments. Because the semantic highlighting knows the position where particular arguments belong, even if the same argument is repeated, it doesn't get highlighted the same way. So here public is actually a target name and here public is the name of a source file public.cpp. So CMake knows that only the first argument is actually a target and highlights it appropriately. Similarly, with the set command, 
public is not a keyword at all, so it doesn't get highlighted. Same as required and interface, those are not keywords of the set command. And parent scope is only a keyword if it's the last argument in the command. So again, it's tricking your brain into understanding what it sees and giving you a lot of hints about whether, when you're writing correct and incorrect code. So that is semantic highlighting. The next feature that I can show is the inbuilt help system. If I click on any command and press F1, I get help for that command. That works with any command built into CMake itself. And it works not only with commands, but also for built-in variables. So CMake AutoMock is a built-in variable in CMake. And any of these built-in ones which have documentation, I can I click on those, press F1, and get documentation for it. Similar with policies, CMake has a lot of policies built in. They're basically deprecation switches. Um, and so if I click on any of those, I can get help for it too. And finally, if I click on any uh, module built into CMake and press F1, I get, a, I get built in help for that as well. So CMake ships with a few modules, which it also ships documentation for. For third-party modules, that won't show up. But for any built-in package, for example, uh, I can easily get help for it. So that is the built-in help system. Uh, next up is code completion. So if I start editing text and I write target underscore and control space for code completion, I get a list of commands which match that as a starting point. I pick target compile definitions. The first argument to this must be a target. So again, if I try to code complete, I get a list of all of the targets that are available in this project. So I can pick public. And next argument is a keyword. It has to be private, public, or interface. So again, code completion knows that. And I can pick public and then some definition. And again, you can see that the syntax highlight highlighting is giving me a hint about whether I've written the correct thing or not. Um, something else that I enabled just for fun is an option to show help on completion. So if I code complete anything, uh, I get documentation for it too. So here if I write CMake policy, um, the keywords that I can give to that are set, for example, then I can give a policy number. And if I hover any of these, I get the title of what this policy is about. I put that just in the title text, but any client could put it anywhere they like. And then again, another keyword, old and new, so I set this to new. Um, so you can see that the code completion knows at which position which keywords are valid. Also possible with this code completion is code completion of package names. So if I have find package here, um, I can pick any built-in CMake package. And there's also at the top one called dummy. That's actually defined within this CMake directory that I have here. And because I've added that to the CMake module path just before the find package, I can choose it as an option. If I actually comment that line out, and I try again to do my code completion, dummy is not offered as an option. So again, I'm getting a hint that I've made a mistake somewhere, that somewhere I should be populating the CMake module path, but I've forgotten to do so. So I'll comment it back in, and there it is again. And of course, the code completion also works with uh, modules that you pass to the include command. So it knows not to offer you find packages here, but only packages which are designed to be included. So this is all nice, and it can help you to understand your CMake code as you're writing it. But something that you often need is to debug CMake code. 
And to do that, you need to know wh what the value of variables are. Usually the way that people do that is to use the message command, but with this tool, you don't need to do that anymore. Um, if I click anywhere in the file and click on this inspect tab, I get a list of all of the variables that are defined at that line in this file. So if I go above the project command, everything related to the language is no longer defined. So I go back down and there it all comes back. If I go beyond the CMake auto mock command, you see that it gets added to the list of what's in context as I move my mouse around. Um, I can also make a text selection and it shows me the difference between the start of my selection and the end of my selection. That works across commands which do something else in another file, such as project. So if I highlight just that command, I see everything that is resulting from calling that command. I can do the same across a find package to see uh, which variables get defined by that find package. If I do that across here, across the Qt5 core package, you can see that there's no variables added at all. And the reason for that is that Qt5 core is a dependency of Qt5 widgets. So already by calling find package for Qt5 widgets, the core variables are already defined, and that next find package doesn't do anything. So actually I can delete it. The code gave me, the, the tool gave me a hint that I have a redundant line of code there. Also, if I highlight across the Qt5 test lib package, you can see immediately that Qt5 test lib found is set to zero. We saw that at the beginning of the video. And if I highlight across the Qt5 help find package, uh, I get the variables that are defined by that package. So things that are added get a plus symbol and things that are taken away get the minus symbol. So you can see that this variable just changed value um, as a result of that find package. So I can do this text selection across any find package or any include that I have in my project. So if I select over the find package for dummy, you can see that it just sets the variable dummy found equals one. Uh, and if I look at generate export header, it exposes something internal. Maybe that it shouldn't, maybe that's a bug. And if I look at the zlib required package, I get zlib variables. So that is state introspection. You get the possibility of inspecting the value of any variable while you're doing development. But something else that can occur when you're reading or writing CMake code is that you want to know why a certain variable is defined. So here there's some variable at the bottom of my file and I'm just issuing a message. But if I want to know where is that variable actually coming from, uh, I can just hit a keyboard shortcut and the line of text which introduces it is highlighted for me. So it's telling me that add subdirectory is adding that for me. And if I select across it, I can see that indeed some variable is not defined before the add subdirectory and is defined afterward. So I can look in and see that there is indeed a set parent scope um, setting this variable for me. It's kind of hidden, so it could take some debugging or a lot of message commands to figure out where that variable is being set. But this tool shows it to you very quickly. So that is the go to definition feature. That is all of the features that I've written for this tool so far. I think there's a lot more that become possible when every feature is coming from CMake itself. Um, but I also want to show that this tool can work on large projects too. So I've loaded it with uh, the LLVM project. And again, I can click on any target in that and I get brought to the location where the target is created in the build system. In this case, LLVM is actually wrapping the regular add library call with a macro. And it's the macro that uh, is defining the target. So actually, even if you wrap those commands 
the tool is able to find uh, where the user has actually specified a particular target. Also, you can see that some lines uh, are not executed in this CMake list file, uh, and I can make some guesses about what uh, the value of system libs is going to be at the end. But of course, I don't have to guess, I can just inspect that and know for sure. So I get the list of everything that gets added in that big block. I don't have to menu man mentally execute it in order to figure that out. So that is a rather big project that we can introspect with this tool. I can browse through everything and filter out a target, etc. So everything that works in this video works with LLVM build, build system 2. However, the point of this video is not really to showcase a tool, but to showcase a technology. That is, what I want to actually show is that the CMake daemon itself is what is making all of these features possible. The code completion, the debugging, go-to definition, contextual highlighting, um, contextual help, is all being driven by CMake itself. So the point is that any client, any user tool, is able to easily get all of these features very easily and cheaply. So the client that I've been showing is just a reference implementation of how you can interact with the CMake daemon. Uh, what's more interesting would be if any tools which users are already using would gain these features by interfacing with the CMake daemon. So to prove that concept, I wrote a plugin for the KDE Kate editor. Uh, I added a new menu item so that I can select Open CMake Build. And if I do that, I need to choose a build directory for a CMake project to open. And I can first open it on itself. So it's loading the project directory for the plugin. Um, it's still using the regular built-in Kate highlighting system. The only other feature that I added in this plugin is the debugging feature. Um, everything else I showed in the other client I have not implemented here, but the point is to show that we can. So I can go back to the menu and open a different build directory. For the sake of familiarity, I'll reopen the project that I've just been showing, the CMake browser, and all of the features that I showed there previously also work now in Kate. So that's it from me. I have shown a bunch of features that the CMake daemon can make possible, and two clients of that daemon, one built from scratch using Qt, and another client built in to the KDE Kate editor as a plugin. I hope you like it, and I hope you decide that you want to build a similar plugin for your own editor. Uh, do get in touch if you want to do that, and let's see if I can help. Thank you.